Uh, today, I'm very glad to have Dr. Guan Ming Wu to present for us. So we come to know Dr. Guan Ming Wu because of a project that uh, Ke Qiang was working on. So it, it, as some of you may know, it's the CoolMap project. So at uh, that time, we were hoping to integrate the React function in CoolMap. But we come across some technical ch challenges. So Ke Qiang actually contacted Dr. Guan Ming directly, and we got a very surprising, enthusiastic help from him. <laughs> and he actually told, told us how to mo modify the module he wrote, wrote, and where the place to implement the function we, we want. And as a result, uh, Ke Qiang implemented the, that function very smoothly. So from that on, we kind of have, we hope have, uh, some kind of collaboration with Dr. Wu and try to invite him to do a visit here. And here he comes. So this morning, I actually learned two surprising things about uh, Dr. Wu. One, one is he actually graduated from Nanjing Uni University and then went on to go to the same graduate school that I went to. In uh, it's down to uh, in Chinese system called the Chinese Science, uh, uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences Graduate School in Shanghai. And then uh, he went to got his PhD in Peking University, which we have a close collaboration with right, right now. And then he went on to uh, did a postdoc work in Dr. Lincoln's lab in Cold Spring Harbor, and then work on uh, as a re researcher in Ontario Cancer Institute. And now he is at the Oregon Health and Science U University. Um, that's one thing. Uh, the, the other thing is he, his hometown and my hometown is actually 40 miles apart. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we basically come from the same, same area. Uh, and actually, I just want to add a third, third surprising thing. Where is it? Where is the hometown? Uh, so uh, uh, Dr. Wu's hometown is in, in Cixi, in, in Zhejiang province. So I was from Ningbo. Yeah. So it's just 40 miles apart. Sichuan province? No, no Zhejiang, Zhejiang province. Zhejiang. Yeah. Zhejiang, yeah, it's like. You know, I once asked somebody that very question, and he said, Oh, it's a very small place. You would not have heard of it. I said, Well, what was the, what was the population? He said, Oh, only 3 million. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think the size of the city grows it's, uh, very significant. I yeah. think like in Ningbo now, they claim to have like 5 million people. Yeah. It, it, it's like a second string, third string city in China. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah actually, the, actually, the most surprising thing I learned from Dr. Wu is he is actually not trained in computer science. So he got his degree in biological research. So this part is particularly surprising because Ke Qiang told me the code that he, he read, read, wrote by Dr. Wu was very nice. So because Ke Qiang got, got his PhD degree in Beijing, uh, got, uh, got, got both his uh, uh, bachelor and master degree in Beijing University, one of the best universities in China in, in, in computer science. But Dr. Wu actually, I asked Dr. Wu where he learned his programming skills. He basically told me he was just interested in programming and learning things by himself. So uh, now let's have Dr. Wu to present his work for us. OK. <laughs> Thank you for your very nice words and also for your invitation. So today I'm going to talk about the project I have been working on for over 15 years almost. Rectal and also its rectal functional intention network. So before I intro oh, oh, this is not so. So before I introduce the rectal pathway, I'd like to first talk about why we need a rect uh, rectal pathway and also pathway based data analysis. So here is a, a actual motiva motivation example. So several currently. Actually, several years ago, there are several uh, TCG 
groups, they did some kind of so-called pan cancer data analysis. Basically, they just run this data analysis across multiple cancer types. They found this 127 cancer driver genes, which is listed here. So here is, uh, actually, I should stand up. It's probably much easier. <laughs> okay. So here is uh, about 127 cancer driver genes. So from this simple list, we basically don't know what actually they are doing. So how function, how functional relationship they are, they have. So we have to somehow project these genes into some kind of biological pathways in order to learn what functions they have, why their mutations can cause cancer. So so for doing this, we needed to do so-called pathway. So I don't see herb two or her two new. Oh, I don't know. So this, yeah, this this basically is based on mutation frequency analysis based on about uh, uh, two thousand tumors. So most likely, herb two is not. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it should have mutated, but it's not frequent enough to be classified as significant in this analysis. So that's kind of no much, right? Okay. So this is from multiple cancers? This is from multiple cancers, yeah. Yeah, it is about 12 cancers, okay. So we wanted to know why their mutation can cause cancer, so we do pathway-based analysis. So what pathway-based data analysis can do, basically they can project uh, a seemingly unrelated list, uh, list of seemingly unrelated genes in a list onto pathway contacts. So the user researchers can know the functional relationship about these genes. And also, based on this relationship, they can get mechanism insight from this list of genes which may be related to some kind of disease development or some kind of biological process or some kind of phenotypes. So this list of genes can become from differential gene express, GWAS or epigenomic or some kind of semantic mutation analysis. So using pathway-based data analysis can also increase analysis power and reduce the data complexity. For example, can try can reduce the dimension of your data set from tens of tens of thousands of genes into several hundred proteins. So in order to do, oh, several years ago, uh, this group, Catrate P at LZ, generalized our pathway-based data analysis approach into three generations. The first generation, so-called over-representation analysis, which can be used to do pathway enrichment analysis for a list of genes. Try to find what pathways are enriched for one list <coughs> of genes. The second one is based on so-called gene level statistics. The second one, by using gene level statistics, this approach can increase uh, appro can increase method specificity and the sensitivities to some higher level. So the one of most popular approach in this category is so-called GSEA for gene set enrichment analysis, which was developed by a group in Broad Institute. The so last uh, generation method called pathway topology based, which can take use pathway topology structures, including number of reactions, position of genes, and then type of reactions. So based on this information, they can get some pathway level impact score. One of uh, popular approach in this category is so-called SPIA, which was developed by Wang State Institute here in Detroit. So all these methods, they, have, they all need to use this pathway-based database. So pathway-based database basically is the foundation for doing pathway-based data analysis. So currently, there are several pathway databases. Actually, there are a lot of pathway databases available. The most popular and currently active maintenance-free database 
is rectal, keg, and wiki pathway. So wiki pathway use the so-called wiki style online editing tools for researchers the, in the whole research community to do online pathway editing. Keg uh, is very popular in the research community. The original data in Keg actually was open sourced but be after but several years ago because of funding issues. So the data in Keg are not open sourced anymore. But the user can still access their contents based on its website or based on its RESTful API. But for large scale data analysis, most likely you need, you need to download data from this database. Then you need to pay. So you need to pay the license in order to get the batch downloading. So rectal is the top is the topic I want to discuss today. So rectal is open source. Is probably the most comprehensive open source pathway database widely used in the research community. We have this so-called quarterly release procedures. So the current release version is release 56, which was just released last week. The current release contains about uh, over 9,000 uh, human genes, which is about 40. 45% of total human genes contains over 9,000 uh, compress, around 9,600 directions, and over 2,000 pathways. So we uh, actively cooperate with uh, external biologists, which are, list, which are actually experts in their own fields. They collaborate with our in course Biologic, biologist uh, curators to curate pathways for lectin database. We use a lot of original public literature. The current version of lectin contains preliminary literature more than 21,000, so which I think is a lot. The contents in lectin database is extensively cross reference to external biology biochemical in, um, bioinformatics and the chemical informatics database. We also computationally infer pathways for 18 model algorithms based on pathways for manually curated for human. So we manually curate the pathways for humans and we do some kind of homologue predictions for other model algorithms. So we also of course provide a tools and data set for users. OK, so Lecton basically is so-called the reaction network database. So the basic unit in Lecton database is a reaction. So biological process or biological pathways are annotated as a group of reactions, which is used to transfer a set of entities to another set of entities. So pathways in Lecton basically is a group of reactions which are all linked together. So we also, uh, so, so, so basic unit in rectum is, uh, in rectum is reaction. So reaction is annotated as this. So this is our main, main uh, data model. So the, re the reaction has input, output, the input, output, and the regulation, which is used to annotate the activate or inhibit catalyst which is used to annotate the catalyst. So entities in relation can be proteins, small molecules, complex, or no coding RNA, some kind of disease variant, like a mutation variant, or some kind of drugs. So all these entities are, are linked to external cataloging database. So we also, of course, link to gene ontology database. Like in this case, so we uh, link to gene ontology in three different places. Okay. Is that that they capture gene regulation for so this is transcription? Yes. Yeah, we, we, we also capture gene regulation. Yeah, I'll show you just a second. Yeah, okay. So here is the example. So we, uh, this is this actually is an example. Like we show actually the, the biochemical ratios. So this is an example. The activation of BID by active caspase. So from this reaction, you can see how this BID protein is active 
in this pathway called the intrinsic pathway for apoptosis, which is a sub pathway of apoptosis. So from here you can see this protein is activated by removing N terminal 61 amino acids. So this gives us the actual biochemical mechanism about this activation reaction. So compared to KEG, which is another most popular biological pathway, so you can see the difference between rectal and KEG. So this is the same activations in KEG, which is uh, either CASP8 or CASP10 can activate DAD. So in this case, they just show very simple activation, activ activation interactions. But in rectal, we actually tell us what actually happened in this activation. So this kind of information is very useful for, uh, for advanced pathway-based data analysis, which sometimes based on ordinary differential equation. So you need to know the actual mechanism for, in order to, dra to do drug development. Because for drug de development... Transporters, transporters. Yes, 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 yeah. So, so in this example, DID, yeah. you know there's actually a proteolytic cleavage at 61. Yes, right? yes, yes, that's so right. you had two splice isoforms, mm. one of which had the full sequence, the other one 62 to 195. Yes, that, that is a great question. Currently, you recognize that in the system. Yeah, currently we don't support the isoforms yet. <coughs> yeah, that will be our future directions. We want that. Yeah, we have we currently as a rectal only provide some kind of framework so people can actually overlay all this data like uh, different isoforms or to that to see if this kind of regime can still happen. Yeah. Okay. So so the data model in rectal is very flexible, so we can basically annotate a lot of different types of pathways. For example, here I list uh, Metabolism pathways, signal transduction pathways, pathways related to develop bi development biology, cell cycle, DNA damage, stress, and uh, different multiple disease pathways. Also, in signal transduction pathways, we actually cover transcription gluten network by using some kind of, uh, we use so called black box reactions, which basically use transcription factors as a kind of activities. For gene for protein expression. So how about the, like the lower of known coding RNA? Like yeah, we have no coding RNA. So, have, <coughs> so, so like enhanced RNAs. Uh, no, we we have not done that part yet. Yeah, we have not actually tried to annotate a DNA strategy yet. We focus on more like biochemical reactions okay. in our current stage. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Basically, when people do actually do data analysis, they can overlay all these data structures, for example, like gene expression based on different DNA structures or to pass with this is behavior. Yeah. So, okay. okay? Uh, so we, we also draw, actually draw pathway diagrams based on this so-called SB gene, which is systems biology graphic notation. So in SBGN, they have a lot of different graph notations, something like this. This is just a subset of SBGN. So we use some kind of uh, community standard for drawing pathway diagram for easy exchange for as a database and also uh, much easier for users to take our data content. Okay. So for users actually to browse our database and do pathway-based data analysis, we develop a we have already developed a very good user-friendly, we think they are very good user-friendly web application. The most important features in this application is called the Pathway Browser, which can be used by users to browse all this uh, uh, human curated content for biological pathway. So this is basically a screenshot of this uh, Pathway Browser, which shows the pathway I just show you so is the intrinsic pathway for apoptosis. So when the user selects some object in this pathway diagram, several types can be displayed for users to choose. For example, the first one is called a description, so which shows the 
general information about this select object. So here is the, uh, this uh, <coughs> this uh, cat space active DRD by Krivage. So this is a uh, reaction. So there is a very short text summation, which is some kind of like mini review style text for for users to know. So the 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 users of our database basically uh, covers a lot of different uh, categories. Some of them are just uh, like undergraduate students. They are learning biologists. So they can get all these texts that they are actually very used. Some of them, like computational biology, they come from as a background. So if they find that there are some hit pathways, so they can, from the text description, they can know what this kind of path, what is the function of this pathway. So in terms of the stable identifier, mm, yeah. uh, is, is the identifier stable along all different releases? Or yes. It has a, see the point one, does it mean point one means something special? Uh, point one, this means the first version of this object. Okay. Yeah, so we have, this is uh, the major ID. So if you just uh, put this ID into a browser, so you will get a, a list of this if it has multiple <coughs> versions. So the, you can see, sometimes you can see point one, point two, point three, but it should have only one stable identifier. It's a major part of stable identifier. Okay. So that identifier is it just for this reaction. Or? Yeah, for these specific reactions. This is stick, stick to this one. So this is a really stable identifier. Okay. Okay, so we can expect this is stable for a long, long time, yeah. Okay, so this is the first type called a description. So then we also have some others, like uh, molecules. So this is basically a list of all molecules involved in these displayed pathways. So the molecules related to select object here, two, two proteins are highlighted with different color. You may be a little difficult to see different colors here, but it, probably you can still see. So it is a little bit brighter than others. Okay. So we also uh, link to structure. Sometimes the, we have so, so uh, entities related to select object have some structure information. For example, uh, for these two proteins. Uh, the ID and the caspase eight. So they have three D structures. We got we query 3D structures from a PDB database called actually PDBE, which is the mail of PDB in Europe, hosted by EBI, European Bioinformatics Institute. So we we use the REST for API to uh, 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 aggregate information into this type. Okay, so we also uh, get showing gene expression data for this select object based on gene expression atlas, which is a database also hosted at EBI. So why we use a lot of data from EBI? Because uh, one group for electron actually is in EBI. So this is a natural fit for us, OK? So in order to increase the coverage of our electron, we also use this so-called psychic interaction, psychic web service. So we use this. Psychic web, psychic web interface to do uh, interaction over it. Sometimes uh, the coverage in light may be not, not high enough, especially in our early stages. So the coverage in light probably is just 20% or 30%, which is not good for high slope data analysis. Right now we have 50, 40%, so sometimes it's good. But still, so you, if you want more coverages, so you can use this psychic based. Uh, interaction uh, overlay to see this one. So here is an example. So we, from this psychic web service, so we can see the searching uh, protein interaction partners based on this data source intact, which is a protein protein interaction database. It's also hosted at the EBI. So uh, Five of them actually has already been annotated in this pathway, but the other eight is not annotated. So by using this feature, you can get all these eight proteins and put this here. So sometimes with this kind of feature, it's very helpful for do high-slope data analysis. Okay. 
So come back to our original uh, example, 127 cancer driver genes. <laughs> so we can just uh, upload this 127 cancer genes out to our browser, which provide some kind of puzzle-based analysis, including gene enrichment analysis, species comparison between model algorithm and human, and also gene expression virtualization and overlay. So for this 127 cancer genes, you, so you can see there are a lot of genes, a lot of pathway are reached by this set. So here is just an example. So you can see some kind of different colors are highlighted, which means in this big complex, some of these genes actually come from this 127 cancer drug genes. So they are highlighted in different colors. But that does my RB2 my the, the whole slide is about it, actually. Yeah, it's a heterodimer, so it's right. some, yeah, some other isoforms, yeah, if so possible. It's, it's yeah. It has to be dimerized, yeah. but it does not make a homodimer. Okay. So it's dimerized either with RB1, which mm -hmm. is EGFR, okay. or RB3 or RB4. Okay, <clears throat> so yeah, most likely maybe this is EGFR, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but in, oh, in our website, you can actually click this, see the actual genes inside <coughs> this one. So I, I is this screenshot I yeah, in the box way up in the left top it shows all three possible formations. Oh yes, yeah. EJ five, urban three and urban four. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so basically this is just a social issue. This one and this one they associated into this one. Right. Okay. So that's what that's what your node so you, you showed us the edges, the reaction, the summarized allocation, the structures between the nodes themselves and the proteins. Helps the same level of allocation. Uh, can you, can you, you click on herb? Oh. Or something that would show you what? Yes, yes, yes. When you click this, when well, you can see that all these content uh, subunits in this complex. Yes. Yeah. Is this the, the question you ask? Yeah. Yeah, but some of them are actually so-called uh, protein family. In this case, they are they are not actually a complex. So they we we call the entity set. So this entity set has one, two, three, four, four members. So each one can have same functions. So each one can form complex with this complex form this one. So this is implicitly annotated here. So the, if you do computational expansion, you actually can expand the four directions for this specific one. OK. So, so when you upload the gene list, uh, does, does, the pro, does your web, web, web function take the gene list only, or you can associate each gene with a score? Uh, currently, we can only use gene list. We cannot use gene scores yet. Yeah, so this is only based on gene list, yeah, simple list. So is there any difference between your uh, real-time-based uh, uh, enrichment analysis versus uh, gene ontology-based uh, enrichment analysis? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah, because all this enrichment analysis basically is based on your foundation, which is a database, right? Gene ontology, you can think about the gene ontology as a database, rectum as, a, as another database. So all they have different maps. For example, this uh, <coughs> two. in rectum, we can map to this uh, apoptosis or this uh, this this urban two pathways. But in in gene ontology, so they most likely map to signal transduction or something like that. So you will see different results. So the, the, yeah, so the map is different. So like the gene ontology does not give the Edges, the links, right? I don't right. Know, for your uh, pathway enrichment analysis, do you consider the edges, the relations, or you don't consider the relations? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, in our enrichment analysis, we don't consider this yet. Yeah, but I will tell you how we can actually consider that if I have time. Okay. Yeah, yes. So for this simple enrichment analysis, we still treat them as gene set. As the bag of genes without considering and the topological relation. So when I see 
three generations. So this is still the first generation of pathway enrichment analysis. Okay. Buy a gene set if they are linked by the edges. Oh. And go seven links or twenty links. Yeah, we just ignore these links. Yeah. So if one gene is linked to another seven genes, we get eight genes without constant this relationship. For this specific analysis, of course. So, so for this example, uh, signaling by RB2. Yes. How large is the set and how did you decide? Oh, for this one? Uh, well, it says 77 reactions right there. OK. So, so there must be an algorithm to decide where it stops, this gene set, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. This is annotated here. So this is the actual no, I, I think it is our annotated by biology. And then they decide. Yeah. Here yeah, yeah, is yeah. the so, set. So, yeah, so, uh, so I think they, like they basically decide the, the tree, like, like under, under each branch, how, how many genes are going. Even though there are still some links going yeah, out yeah, yeah. of the set, they yeah. decide that things are inconsequential. That's right. So yeah, this yeah. is like a representation analysis from what I understand. So yeah. it's like hyper, if Fisher is exact test or hyper parameter. Yeah, this is based on binomial test. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's similar to yeah. Fisher. The problem with all pathways is they are artificial. Concepts. Yes, yeah. that's right. <clears throat> that's, that's that is actually yeah. Pathway. Yeah, yeah. A, a bigger question like how we define pathway boundary. So yeah, yeah this is this on <coughs> on manually yeah, most so like a manual. I completely agree with you. There's no boundary basically. Like every, everything is linked. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. But still, there are some kind of functional relation boundary. You can yeah. try to figure that out. For example, like a pop torsis, they are more or less. You can see they are kind of functional. Okay. So, but, but I guess June point is currently the boundary determination is kind of arbitrary. Yes. Uh, like there's no set of algorithm for, for you to determine. Yeah, there yeah, will never be. Yes. Especially yeah. if someone posed a question saying that the yeast state caused the whole topology has changed. Therefore, if the goal is to yeah. study how the boundaries have changed, yeah. they yeah. predefined yeah. the set. Yeah. yeah, that is a question I will address in my second part of talk. Okay. <laughs> a lot of these pathways overlap, like some biochemical ones. And in other words, the same genes or proteins. Yes, exactly. Pathways. See my next part of talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> so in our database, we all we also provide all this different uh, uh, download options, which can be used by uh, external poor users, something like by information or computational biologist, or some people like your guys. So you don't want to use our web-based analysis tool. You just want to develop your own tool, so you can download all data based on these uh, several community standards. So two of them, SBG and Psychic, I have already uh, talked about. So another tool we support is BioPax and SBML. BioPax is web ontology based pathway exchange format. Currently, probably this is a default pathway exchange format in the research community. Another one is SBML, which is an XML-based markup language for pathway modeling. Most likely, it's ODE-based mathematical modeling. So Recton can create some kind of framework for SBML, but of course we don't provide all these OD, ordinary differential equations, so they have to try to create the equations by their own, but we provide all these frameworks for them. We also provide a RESTful API, so people can actually access our content by using our RESTful API, okay? So in case you are curious how we actually do, uh, do annotation, so we during past 15 years, so we have developed several <coughs> uh, software pipelines. So the left side is one pipeline for us to collect data from the research community. So the authors are uh, external biologists, which are field experts for their own research. So uh, curators are in-house PhD level biologists, so our curious ask external biologists to do annotations for us by using this author tool or sometimes just use PowerPoint or Microsoft Word. 
acute collect all this information from external community and then use a Java based standalone application called Cura Tool. So collect all this, manage all this data from outside based on Recton data model and associate uh, literature, put them in our format and put it into this developer database. Do they have some thresholds for singleton noise, for example, if it's gene expression, mm. if, it's RAM, mm. if it's proteins, peptides of a certain length, no. peptides versus yeah. one, they take all data and no, no, we, we don't do that. We actually collect our pathway, biological pathway, like this protein intact with another protein. With I thought you have to convert the primary data into pathways. No, no, we don't do that. We actually collect all this. For example, there are some review people talk about hepatosis. So we talk to the authors of this review paper, ask these authors to create these pathways for us. Yeah, so then we put it into our data format. Yeah. But the authors have criteria for what you can include and what you can exclude. Uh, yes, that is completely depends on the same, yes. We treat them as an expert, so we believe them what they are doing. <laughs> but usually we have some kind of delay, so all pathways in our database are really not cutting edge, so usually should have kind of like established facts. So it should be really highly reliable. Like metabolism pathways. So we actually collect metabolic pathways from textbooks, biochemistry textbooks. OK. <laughs> Just to put them into a computational format, yeah. So people can do data analysis. So if you have people submitting Word documents, yes. <clears throat> does a curator then have to go through and like apply a, a yes. Defined vocabulary or something. Uh, we for this uh, word we of course don't have ontology, don't have vocabulary. But our curators, they are our PhD level biologists. They actually understand what all these biologists say, so they can map their words into our. Sometimes we use some kind of standard uh, ontologies, so can manually, really manually. So it is really a very hard work for to this kind of manual annotation, yeah. So can anyone send the, their pathways or is it invitation only? Uh, of course, anyone can send their pathways. Then we all curious, we talk with these people, like uh, ask them to Yeah, OK. Uh, yeah, so, so after the data put into development database. So before release, we will ask another set of biologists to do review for us. So you can see this procedure is more like some kind of journal article, right? So we have people submit data to us, then we ask another set of people to do review for us. So sometimes these reviews, they are not happy with our content. So then we will trigger some kind of update into the database. So before we put all this content into public, so we uh, we have a software called a slicing tool. We slice some release ready contents from the web database into release candidate data. Then go through another software pip 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 pipeline, put release the actual content into the public. Okay. So in summary, we have the biological pass database called Recton. So you can access Recton. It's on its website and uh, several APIs and can download the data. It's on several different standard formats. And the user can also perform positive data analysis. And also the nice things our contents and the software are totally open to end users. Okay. Questions? No? So so there are actually two issues for password based data analysis, some of some of them actually you have already asked. So one is one is this highlight issue. So in 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 Recton, we organize the, all these pathways in a highlight way, which is kind of standard way to organize biological knowledge, like in standard biochemistry or molecular biology textbooks, in order to present all these pathways to. New, new biologists or some students, so we all, people always try to organize all this into this kind of 
I like the stretch, but sometimes it's very difficult. Like uh, if we get a list of uh, hit pathways, like here, this in this four case, they actually organize in the same branch in the tree. But sometimes if you cannot see this, you just see this, you cannot see this. So you cannot see the relationship. This is one problem we some react on. Do. So another thing is, if you see this, these two pathways, they are these two hit pathways, signaled by FGFR and signaled by SCF. So both of them are hit pathways. They are two sub pathways under signaling transaction. So it seems like they don't have any relationship. But both of them are hit pathways. So we are just wondering why they are two hit pathways. So basically, so we have at least two challenges by using the lecton pathways to do this kind of pathway analysis. One is we have to find a way to handle the pathway hierarchy organization like. And another is how to handle pathway crosstalk, which is about sharing of pathways among, sharing of proteins among pathways, and also pathway regulation based on all these intentions of content components in different pathways. So there are many ways can try to overcome these issues. One of, I guess, most efficient and the most powerful ways to do network-based <coughs> data analysis. So a network-based data analysis <coughs> approach is based on systems-wide biological network, which covers a majority of human genes in one single pathway. Most of these networks usually right now are protein-protein intention networks. So people can use many network clustering algorithms to find the network modules in this network-based approach. And then they can annotate all these network modules based on seeing ontology or pathway annotation to find the significant related pathways. So based on this method, they can also try to do gene signature by mark discovery. So they can also use this network-based approach to try to find the disease genes. For example, they can try to find the cancer drive genes based on disease modules. Okay, so so for come back to our original question. So it is about uh, pathway hierarchy organization rectum. So basically, we can just uh, flatten our pathways in our hierarchy into one single network, and also to pathway cross talk, which come from shared. Pass, share the proteins in different pathway or pathway intentions based on intentions of components in different pathways. So we can just put all this intention as a component in one single network. So basically, we can see why several why different pathways they have or hit in the same gene set, or they are actually cross-talk features. Okay. So is it only doing Interaction-based sharing. Oh, well, some pathways can talk to each other because they have a diffusible product that they have in common. Yes, that the is. Uh, yeah, I, I think I here I treat this as an intelligence, which is an output from one pathway is an input from another pathway. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So in rectum we develop pathway, we develop a systems-wide network-based approach based on uh, so-called the rectal functional intention network. Rectal functional intention network is a contra based on this very simple way. So if you still remember, the reaction is the basic unit in our database. So we have developed this very, very simple converting mechanism which can convert a reaction into a set of pairwise relationship. <coughs> this pairwise relationship can be semantically annotated based on entities' roles in reactions. So which here, if this is a catalyst, so I can see catalyst actually activate input here. So this is better than like simple protein-protein intention network. Sometimes if we see complex, we just do pairwise uh, 
permutation to generate a set of interactions. So based on this simple scheme, we can generate the so-called rectal functional interaction or rectal AFI network. So here is just a sim simple example. So here, originally, this relation not come to very simple activation, which is very similar like in CAG annotation, right? So CASP8 activate BIT come from these relations, okay? So are, are all intermediate products considered potential outputs? All intermediate product can, uh, no. <coughs> yes, here. If you see this one, because they could be diffuse. I was just wondering how you know is this considered sort of a linear kind of thing? So it's one or two or whatever inputs, yes. many steps, yes. outputs. Yeah. But all of those things in between potentially could be outputs as well as yes. input to something yes. within. Yeah, but when we convert them into FI network, all these outputs actually will be gone. If you see this one, so you cannot see outputs here because they are all protein or gene based, so we cannot really see all these fragments or this kind of post modification, translational modification information. So I thought you were doing small diffusible molecules as well to define some of these interactions. Uh, that is for recton pathways. Okay. But right and now I switch it to yeah, networks. Yes. So Jeff, what do you mean by intermediate? If, well, so, so some of these things, well, even, um, even protein signaling pathways sometimes have small diffusible products that, that yeah. go between yeah. different things. Yeah, right? yeah, I think and, I, and they don't just stick in that one pathway, they may potentially work with another. That's just crosstalk, right? That's yeah, but this is not, it's not catching. I think they he can he can have the output of one reaction to be the input uh, of uh, many uh, other but reactions. It depends on how you define the reaction. No, I think so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make one comment. Is it true that your semantics is really just the nouns and verbs? The verbs are the edges. The nouns are those little circles. You don't have adverbs or other phrases. You can dissect the entire network into simple constructs where noun, verb, noun, the, 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 the triplets. You mean boarding network, something like that? The, the triplets. The triplets, yes. A noun, a verb, and a noun. Yes, you yeah. Take everything in any graph into yes. a collection of those triplets. Yes, yeah. we, we can convert this into RDF. I know what that is. Oh, RDF is a triplet database. Okay. Yeah, resource definition framework, right. yeah, which is a triplet based for, uh, data format for people do all this semantic web uh, right. process, yeah. So even the reaction is what you call the fundamental unit. The reaction can be broken down into even more fundamental units, which are those triplets. Yes. Yeah, it's so completely yeah, possible. So, uh, maybe, uh, I can, so to address your like adverb question, yeah. so they basically add an, another triplet to, to, one, to one of the nouns. Or one of the verbs. Right. So, so I was hoping the, the verb can be uh, activation, inhibiting, or releasing, or something. Mm. And then if adverb means only in muscle or only in rats, right? Ah, okay. Could you that, fold adverbs into the verbs? Uh, uh, that, that, that's our, actually something I. No, I, currently I, no, we can't no, do that. No, no, no. Yeah, so we can that, that, teach your specific that's kind of teacher. Excellent question. That's actually something missing in all the current, in, in, in almost all the current pathway network. So the only thing they do is they separate into species. And right. now, now people actually haven't done anything related right. to like a tissue specific thing. But right. so those are to me are adverbs. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that is in our future directions. Yeah, in our next round of grant application. Yes, yeah, so we wanted to teach a specific. But we have something like a disease specific information. Yeah, annotated. Like uh, this protein mutated in breast cancer. So what actually happened? This kind of thing. Yeah, yes. Well, it seems to me disease, tissue, species, those are metadata. And what you asked about adverbs would be modifiers yeah. of the pathway. I think they're really very different. Anyway, please finish. Okay. Uh, how much time I still have? Uh, we're done at the hour, so yeah, we're approaching time.
Just four minutes. Yeah, a couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so basically, right twenty five network can be regarded as a simple alternative view of converting the biochemical reaction based the pathways. So all this detailed information, if you wanted to see, you still have to go back to our original pathway. So what we have tried to do is just create a simple view, so people can use our powerful network-based algorithm and the visualization tool. So that's another view. So sometimes it is needed because for the wholesale or whole genome views, it is most likely not possible use all these kind of detailed structures. So we have to go this way. So this is the actual electronic fire network actually much more complex than what I just said, uh, a simple uh, if I network view. So we basically try to do a lot of different uh, ways to aggregate information from different sources. Like uh, in, in, besides the rect, we also use different pathway database. So we also use a simple naive basin classifier. And because of time limit, I need to really go quick. So we refresh all this if I network every year. So this is uh, some statistics in our current version, which we concentrate uh, last December. So we cover about 60% uh, of total human genes. So uh, uh, around 327,000 FI network. So compared to our original rectum, we have 50% increase. So the rectum funding can be used by different uses cases by us, and also by the whole research community. So uh, I would just uh, will really, really quickly show you three use cases. The first one is use the electron infrared network for visualization. So we use uh, this electron infrared network for TCAG real breast trauma sample visualization. Basically, we collect 341 genes and uh, map to FI network, then contract FI subnetwork, then we do network clustering. And you can see this network uh, for this uh, 91 grade TCG grade press toma. So we do functional enrichment analysis, find module one, which has 63 genes, and module two, 51 genes. Module one, genes in module one mainly relate to signal transduction pathways. Most of genes are significantly um, located in cytoplasma, plasma membrane, and the genes in module one significantly relate to cell cycle and cell cycle related uh, pathways. Genes here mainly in nucleus. So we do a sample distribution analysis and find uh, the majority of samples have mutated genes in both modules, which is suggested in order for Grisbert's trauma development a patient should have mutations in, uh, in these two modules, which is this here. So, which means a patient should have mutations in both signal transduction pathways and the cell cycle, cell cycle pathways. So another example I'd like to show is, is the FI network for disease gene prediction. For this one, we develop a, a, a score, which is based on uh, gene ranking score from MSKCC. So this is is a, a gene, so I can overlay all the scores onto the FI network. Then based on its neighboring genes, I can get a score for this gene. So here we use this maximum values of its neighboring genes. Here is 20. So based on this distribution, based on this simple scoring system, we can get this distribution. So you can see there's significant difference. So based on this distribution, we can create a classify and do some uh, driver predictions based on copy number variation. So the, the performance based on AUC is just 70%. It's not really good. But this is based on very old version of FI network. In our very recent studies, we did this similar thing for TC for ICGC pan cancer data analysis, but the performance is much better. We get AUC 93% with precision and record here. 
So this is our features we use. And this is some scores. Okay? So we also can use FI network for searching signature discovery. So to do this, we develop this approach. Try to uh, assign gene expression correlation and some kind of weights to FI network. So to convert this original unweighted FI network into weight FI network, then you use another network clustering algorithm called MCL. So from this one, we can create modules. Then we can check each module's uh, and behavior in survival analysis. So in this uh, results, we use NEGM as a train data set, or other sets of validation data set. So for this specific uh, module, which is this one, we get really nice performance. So we compare this module with other non-48 gene signatures for breast cancer, based on these five independent breast cancer data. So you can see uh, all modules actually has higher performance in or as a non-48 gene signatures, okay? So come back to 127 cancer drive genes. So we do similar thing and get these four modules so we can annotate them. So come back to these two uh, FGF and SCFPRT. So you can see they are actually in the same modules. So, so, so this tells us the reason why this EGF and SCF, they both are hit pathways for this one. So, but you actually can come to see the detailed information. So all this, all this information, all this analysis method that we actually have be built into this so-called red FIVs, which is a side skip, which I have already introduced. So we have, this is a just a simple list of features uh, this app can can do so. I don't. We are not go to details. This is uh, information and uh, something which I will not actually go to here because of time limit. Basically, the current focus of our project is we try to develop a so-called polygraph models for lactam pathways, which will take years all these ages <coughs> without go to lactam FR network try to answer question something like, uh, if I see this gene's expression is increased, how likely this one is also increased? Or, or something like, uh, if I see this gene's expression, or there's some semantic mutation here, see how likely this gene's expression or function change, something like that, okay? So we also, this is the same uh, regulatory five is, so we have already list these uh, uh, models to our rectum FIVs. If you are interested, you can just go and take a look. Okay. So in conclusion, so rectum is a highly reliable curated database of biological pathway. So its website provides tools and database sets for visualization and interpretation. And the rectum FIVs provides a powerful way to visualize the animal cancer and disease. So all data and software are public. To and the people in the whole research community. So this is most important. So this is a big project. See, there are uh, several organizations work for this project. And the project is supported mainly by an, a National Human Genome Research Institute. We also got fund from Genome Canada, Ontario Research Fund, and also from AMBO EGI. And Here's the place I'm working on right now. This is OHSU. <laughs> okay, so all our buildings exist in this mountain. So this is actually downtown Portland. So here, this slide is not good. Sometimes, it, most of the time, if the weather is good, you can see several snow-covered mountains around this area. So it's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Oh, thank you. I'm Bill Oman. Okay. 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 Nice to meet you. Oh. These guys.